7 o'clock. You know what that means. Here we go again. Jeremiah Bullfrog cuts it up on the old live stream. Jose and I are super excited to bring you a show. We've got uh, a little extra special treat today. Pizza Chronicles Part 2. That's right, we're bringing it back. It's been a minute since we went over pizza. Figured I'd switch it up a little bit and do uh, pan pizza today. Um, last class, if anybody remembers the uh, Pizza Chronicles on the, uh, on the first time around, we rocked out with, um, with Neapolitan style or just, you know, round pizzas. We uh, fired them off under the broiler on a baking steel. Um, you know, they come out delicious in your own home kitchen. And, you know, we're going to advance your skill set today. We're going to drop knowledge bombs on you. Um, shouts to Beth. Thanks for joining. Thanks for joining. If you guys are uh, joining for the first time, I, uh, I want to welcome you all. And, you know, we like to get a little inter interactive. Jose's up in Astoria. He's dodging hurricanes. Uh, same as us down here. Weather's been wacky, weird, and wacky stuff. Shouts to Michelle, shouts to Brian. Appreciate y'all for, for, for being on. And that's it, we're gonna do uh, pizza two. Uh, got a little, a, little, um, a little something special to start off with and I know I've earned it. We're gonna do a cocktail demo. Um, something new we're trying out here on uh, the old Cuts It Up. I'm thirsty, I'm parched. Um, this is one of my favorite cocktails. It goes really, really well um, with all things Italian, uh, especially pizza. And we're going to rock out a Negroni here. Um, so while I'm rambling, I'm going to grab the uh, necessary ingredients. So we are, um, we're rocking with um, this super dope um, St. George um, gin. Um, and we've got the Bruto Americano. Uh, if you guys don't know, um, if you don't know on... Um, on the Negroni, it's uh, equal parts, which makes it super easy to remember. Um, you barely need a recipe, but I went ahead and dropped it in the description below like we do, so you could check it out, make yourself a Negroni as well. Shouts to Queens. Ira, what's going on? Neza, welcome, welcome. Bienvenidos. So we're, we're going straight into it, guys. Um, we're getting into the, uh, to the Negroni. Right, so it's three ingredients, uh, and they're all equal parts. Um, we're rocking again, St. George gin. This is um, a dry rye gin. Um, something that's uh, amazing about um, this. This is sort of like a gin for whiskey um, whiskey lovers, and you know, well, who's got two thumbs and really likes whiskey? Um, so we're gonna crack this bad boy open. Um, so on the uh, on this dry rye gin, oh, the nose is amazing. It's got some nice spice. Um, it, it has all the, the bitter elements. Um, it's got a bunch of citrus, and it has, the, um, it has the juniper, but it's not juniper forward on this gin. Um, it is kind of like warm and spicy. Um, I, I would say, you know, like the juniper is sort of complemented with like a little black peppercorn um, and some other spices. Um, so it pairs well. It really holds up with um, with the um, with the bruto. So the, the the bruto americano, you know, you may know it. Um, it it's an amaro. You may know it like um, like Campari is a very popular one. Um, Aperol also. Um, these are Italian style um, amaros or bitters uh, that are made for you to open up your palate. Um, you know, nothing better to start off your meal um, than having um, a, di a, a um, I'm sorry, an, an aperitivo or an aperitif. Um, you know, the, the uh, I'm going to pour because I, I really am parched here. Um, so super easy. Two parts. I'm going two, two, and two. Uh, we got the, uh, you know, the, uh, the big old ice cube in there. My ice cube has been tempered. So out goes the little water that may have formed. And, you know, again, guys, this is, uh, this is like uh, cocktail 101 here. Um, so 
An another cool thing I like to do is um, I like to do two parts gin, one part Amaro, um, and then one part the sweet vermouth. Uh, we're rocking out the Antico Carpano. Um, it's a very heavily seasoned vermouth as well. It's got like chocolate going on in it. Um, some people say like tobacco even. Um, so I'm going to do two gin, one on the, um, on the Americano and one on the sweet vermouth. And then in the glass, Jose, let's take a look down just real quick. Yeah. Hey, that worked out well. Um, and then, so this is just a stirred cocktail. Um, you know, it's not something that you have to shake. It doesn't have to go in a, um, it does not have to go back up, please. It does not have to go in a, uh, in a shaker. There's no tin. There's no, it's super simple. Three things in the glass on an ice cube, stir it up. You want to get it chilled. You want to get a, a nice dilution on it. That's what the ice is for. Um, and, and that's it. I'm going to take a sip of this bad boy. Uh, it's not a, uh, Negroni without an orange peel. So fresh to order. You just take your peeler, pull it off like, yep. Yeah. Uh, you see very, very little of the white. That's what you want. And these are where all the oils are. And then you just kind of give yourself a little rim job there, right? Get all those natural oils and in the glass it goes. You guys, you'll be shocked if you've never had one of these. What a big difference that orange peel really does make. Salute, Jose, let's see an intro, huh? Hey, 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 here we go. It's Wednesday, it's Wednesday, it's Wednesday, it's Wednesday, live, live, the live, seven o'clock, isolation station, the isolation station. What's good? You know what that means. Here we go. Here we go. Go, go. guys jeremiah bullfrog cuts it up here we go it's wednesday we're rocking and rolling pizza chronicles part two i'm getting lubed up first negroni in the bag mm. Mm. it is quite delicious uh it is a uh, beautiful cocktail as well it's got that crimson um hue to it um what i do like about this uh one last little, little touch note on it is it's not that super bright, like, um, you know, cancer causing uh, dye that, that I feel in this cocktail. It seems like a more, you know, natural approach. Um, it is quite balanced and it is super delicious. Um, so guys, if you're just uh, checking in, it's Pizza, Pizza Chronicles Part 2. Let me know in the comments what y'all's favorite pizza is. Give me a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed already, please do so already. If you want to just give props to Jose for being uh, such a super producer, let's do that as well. Again, shouts to uh, St. George for keeping me lubed up. The oven is super cranked hot because we're doing pies today. Uh, there's a very good chance you're going to see another one of these or two. Mm. So I want to get straight away into it. Um, Last time we did Pizza Chronicles, it was like a marathon, a couple hours long. Um, I'm not even kidding on that. Um, and so we're gonna do it from scratch again. We're gonna make uh, we're gonna make dough. 
We're not necessarily gonna make sauce this time, guys. Um, if you haven't seen uh, the old sauce, I'm gonna figure out a way to get the link to the original Pizza Chronicles up and then everyone will have it. Um, we're gonna do a, a super dope, we're gonna do Sicilian pie. Um, so Sicilian is like the square or the grandma, grandma pie. Um, you know, it, I thought it'd be super, um, I, I thought it'd be easier for everybody to do like a pan style pizza. Um, it's something that I've been rocking out for a couple of years now. Um, when I first got the pizza bug and it's real easy to get the pizza bug, um, because you can obsess over all the little details, right? You can nail the dough. There's many multiple parts of this dough that you can nail. Um, and then it takes a precision to get it right and be consistent. Um, which, you know, guys like me, chef, we're always striving for that perfection. Um, and then, you know, on the cook as well, there's, there's so many little details. So I'm going to condense all that up into a big, uh, pizza ball and, uh, give you guys the, the one, two, three. So as always in the description below, you've got the dough recipe. Um, we're doing a little higher hydration dough which works works really well at home um and i'm gonna just uh i'm gonna take another i'm gonna take another sip of this mm, mm, mm. ah so good so good so good uh brian's asking if that means that the pizza has no cheese no it does have cheese um i'm gonna rock out a, a white sicilian as well uh it's that all white urry thing um, we're putting it on the menu at uh, Square Pie City, so if you guys are local, make sure to pick one up this weekend. Um, on the Sicilian, you know, um, like a true grandma slice, you can have like an upside down, which is cheese and then sauce on the top. They call it a sauce top. Some people call it a nonna. Um, you know, um, in particular, like Long Island in New York has some of the best square slices, some of the best grandma slices around. Um, you know, I grew up going in, uh, in Queens a couple times a year. Uh, my spot was, uh, La Villa Pizzeria. Um, and I kind of stuck with the, you know, the New York slice, but every once in a while I would see one of those, see one of those squares and grab a corner and on the reheat, man, you just can't beat it. Um, but we're, we're rambling. So let's, uh, let's lock it in on dough. If we want to take a look down real quick, cam two, please, senor. So um, this is the this is the skinny on the old uh, on the old uh, dough recipe. Um, we're doing a higher hydration. So this is 500 grams of Tipo zero zero. Uh, the zero zero flour is. Um, the zero zero flour is the Italian. It's super fine. Um, if you don't have zero zero, can you use other flours? Absolutely. Do you want to seek out zero zero? Yes. That'll always be my answer. Uh, 375 grams of just straight up water. And in we go with the yeast so it can bloom. Uh, this is two grams of yeast. So it's not a lot of yeast at all um, for, for basically just over a pound of flour. And we're just distributing the yeast nice and evenly across. And then what I like to do as well is hit it with the salt. And this is 13 grams of salt. You really want a very nicely seasoned dough. And uh, you're halfway there already. So what I like to do, this is my style on dough. Uh, let's go back up real quick. Is I like to use my immersion blender. Um, it just makes sure that super quick on that. It just makes sure that everything gets distributed there perfectly. Um, you know, this is warm water. Um, so a quick note on warm water, we can go back down as well. Um, so the yeast salt mixture in the water is going into the bowl. Um, you want to make sure that you've got a big enough bowl for, for this thing so you're not sloshing around. Um, and then I like to put a little towel underneath so this bowl's not going to move. And we're going to start incorporating the flour slowly into this water using nature's uh, most amazing tool in the kitchen. So here we go. 
we're getting flour worked into our yeast water mixture. And again, the hydration level on this is uh, in the 70s. Um, if you're doing a Neapolitan style, it's gonna be less hydration, meaning less water, but you need a really hot oven to cook that. And then you sort of get the leopard spots um, on it. And so, again, we can go back up. You don't have to watch me uh, mixing it all in. Um, so guys, super, super important here is the temperature of your water, right? Um, you want to use, um, the right temperature water for the right dough that you need. Um, say you're, you just woke up on a, on a weekend and you want to have pizza that night, right? So, so what do you do? There's a couple of tips and tricks for you to make a dough so you can use it that night. And that, the biggest, biggest, biggest um, sort of helper or, or trick there is to use warmer water, right? So if you're using water, and I'm saying like 95 degrees to like 105 degrees Fahrenheit on your water, um, and what that's going to do is it's kind of give you like a little kickstart, right? It's going to punch up that, um, that pizza dough. The yeast is going to start working immediately and you'll be able to have that, you know, ready to go and say like four hours of, of, um, of fermentation. I'm getting a little, a little sticky here. I got the old dough fingers. Um, so I like to keep these bad boys around to scrape it off. And so... That's about it on, on the first mix. Um, there's really nothing crazy about this, um, this dough. What we do, we just take a, a, a look down onto real quick to dough town. You see it, it's come together. There's no open flower spots. That's all you need here back up. Um, there's no, uh, there's, there's nothing crazy on this. What you wanna do is just get these ingredients together. Um, you can kind of squeeze the dough between your, your forefinger and your thumb, that's called the pincer method. Um, and, and that's it. So you're gonna let it set now, right? You mix your dough. You took a sip of your Negroni, because it's delicious. And then you're going to let it sit. And what's going to happen is the flour is going to hydrate. Um, the flour is going to hydrate completely. And then step two is we're going to come back and we're going to knead it. And you don't have to knead this very long at all. Um, you know, anybody who's been a little apprehensive of trying pizza because you think the dough is too hard, you know, watch, watch these steps and, and you're going to know it's really not that difficult at all. Um, what did we do? It was like three minutes of mixing with my hand. Um, and then, um, and then we come back, we let it sit, right? Cause that's the, that's the, the flour doing its work. It's going to drink up all that water. Um, so Brian on, uh, on temperature of water, when it pertains to yeast, you don't always have to go hot. Um, when you're mixing these things, you're looking for a sort of like a final, mix temperature um, like the science behind the dough is your flour is going to be a certain temperature and your water is going to be a certain temperature when you mix the two together right they're going to equalize a lot of people don't think about what temperature is my flour well if it's in an air conditioned environment it's going to be whatever that right pretty close to whatever that environment is um, i don't want to harp too much on the science of it but you can also do a slower ferment on your dough. Um, can you do it with this? Absolutely. But if you know you have at least overnight, right? 24 hours, 48 hours, 72 hours, these are all gonna be longer um, ferments and it's gonna yield a much more, what they call in, in Italy, a more digestible dough, right? Because all the protein is broken down and the yeast it has, has sort of done its job and it makes a much more delicate dough. Um, and it, it's really something that, that I encourage you. Mix your dough, right? We're gonna knead it in a sec. And then, um, then there's a bulk ferment. That's the next step of the process. 
you could do a bulk ferment in four hours, right? If you're really, really pushing it, you know, if you really need to make dough, um, you know, you want to get it mixed as early in the morning as possible, say by like 10, 11 a.m., you know, give it four hours. So around, you know, say like around two, um, you're gonna shape your dough. And then um, you can give it another couple hours to sort of relax in its shape. And then you can make pizza that night, say like around five or six. But if you did the same process, right? Say, you know, right now you're making dough, it's seven o'clock, we're gonna knead it. And then it can go straight away in the fridge in a covered container so it doesn't get a film. And then as it sits there, it's going to keep fermenting slowly. It's called a cold ferment. Um, 24 hour pizza dough is great. Um, you know, if you do the same process here and then you put it away in the fridge, then you come back the next day, you take it out and you're ready to kind of like rock and roll. Um, and then if you give it two days, even the more better. Um, you know, it, it's one of those things, there is like a shelf life to this, right? To, to the dough. Um, past 72 hours, so like 96 hours is probably the end of the life of that yeast. And so what it does is it, um, it starts to just turn the dough pink. Um, I've pushed my dough to the absolute limits. Uh, you know, two years of R&D, of research and development on pizza you really figure out what you can and cannot do. Um, I do have a little dough that I'm gonna show you and I'm gonna start to show you um, the panning as well. Um, what I wanted to make sure you guys get to see, and this is pretty cool, is, um, you know, last episode, right? So Pizza Carnival's one, we did Neapolitan style in the crib, right? We fired up the broiler, we launched the pies under there, and we made some pretty legit pizza for at home. Um, now there's an influx of all these ovens out there, and my favorite one is the Rock Box from, from, from Gosney. Uh, shout out to the old Jolly UK. Uh, an amazing piece of equipment. And uh, I want to show you that now, so let's take a look at Rock Box Beach.
How about that, huh? Shouts to uh, to uh, the old rock box. Amazing piece of equipment. Uh, my mates out in UK make sure I get all the cool toys to, to check out. And um, if you guys guessed uh, that I'm making another Negroni, well, you guessed right. Because uh, Daddy's thirsty. I think we went over that. And um, we're going to do it again. So if you missed it at the top of the hour, uh, we're just doing some... Uh, some of this amazing St. George gin. Um, it's a dry rye gin that works really, really well. Um, it reminds me of whiskey. And I'm a big whiskey fan. So over a nice fresh ice cube, I've got two ounces. I like to do mine two ounces of gin because let's get down to business, right? I do an ounce of the uh, Bruto Americano. And then an ounce of this uh, sweet vermouth. Uh, and that's a Campari. I'll garnish it up with a little bit of orange peel. And we're ready to rock and roll. Uh, so yeah, the rock box um, is a, it's a propane stove. Um, it's portable and um, you could take it anywhere. You know, like I went out to the beach. It was my day off. Wanted to do like a little picnic thing, right? It's like the fam fam. Orange peel goes in. Um, and so, you know, like some people like to make egg salad sandwiches when they go to the beach. Uh, you know, other people, they like to uh, buy some fried chicken. I had a pizza picnic. Um, you know, it's, uh, it, it's pretty convenient. Um, the oven is an amazing piece of design, right? Um, in this portable, um, you could just take the whole box, you throw it in the back of the car and you go anywhere you want. Uh, you need, a, you need a propane tank, but the thing gets up to like 900 degrees Fahrenheit. You fire pizzas off in less than two minutes and they're amazing fire pizzas. Um, on that dough, it is a, um, it is a lower hydration cause it's a hotter oven. So that's, that was kind of like my point that I wanted to bring back up. Um, if you're doing um, a super hot oven, like traditional Neapolitan style pizza, uh, you don't need as much hydration, meaning less water. It's a stiffer dough. Um, but today we're rocking out on the, uh, we're rocking out on the pan pizzas, right? Pizza Chronicles 2. Here's my second Negroni. Guys, if I start slurring and giggling, you know it's the Negronis talking. How we doing so far, everybody? Pizza Chronicles 2? Are you guys excited to see Pan Pizzas? Let me know in the comments. Drop it below. We mixed our dough. We, we're on number two on the Negroni. You've seen that. You've seen it twice now. Is there any questions that you might have at this particular juncture? I am, let's take a look down real quick, please, senor. Right, so this is our dough that's just been mixed up. It has had a nice little time to sit, uh, and I'm going to start kneading it so that we stay on track. Uh, so a little bit of flour down. Um, I, like to, um, I like to knead my dough with the same flour uh, that, that, uh, that I'm using. So this is just a little bit of zero, zero. I mean, you don't need that much, so it's okay. Um, so out we go with that dough that we mix by hand. Could you do this in the Cuisinart? Yes, absolutely. Could you do this in a stand mixer with a hook? Absolutely. Is there something special about mixing your dough by hand? Absolutely. Um, if you've never made pizza dough using your uh, nature's kitchen tool, I highly recommend it. Um, and you see on this on this knead here, right? I've got the um, I've got this dough that's really nice and soft. Um, it doesn't really need much flour. Um, I do like to work with my um, with my dough on a wood board. Um, if you're working with your dough on a stone, 
the stone kind of tends to rob the uh, some of the, the 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 heat off of it. Um, so another little tip and trick for you guys. You know, we're all trying to make uh, the best pizza possible, um, and so every little every little step counts, right? Guys, are you with me? It's Pizza Chronicles Part 2. We're halfway there. We're making our dough. We're making pan pizzas, Sicilian-style squares. Let me know where are you at. What are you thinking? Are you excited about pizza? Do you want to drink a Negroni? Tell me what you're thinking as I finish kneading this dough. And right before your eyes, we can go back up on one, sir. Right before your eyes, you're going to see it. It's like magic. Um, and then it doesn't really take uh, too much more on the steps. I'm just keeping it um, floured so that I don't get flour uh, gloves on my hands. Because we don't want that. And um, I'm going to show you. You're just looking for like a smooth dough. Right? That's all you need on this step here. You don't need to go crazy on on the um on the mix um and then so this goes into an oiled I, I like to clean out my bowl and then pop it in a new oil bowl right little drizzle of oil and um and then in we go um so let's take a look this is a batch that i had made earlier um because with pizza it's all about timing you know, um, it's all about the, the different steps that you have to follow. So we mix our dough. It takes a minute to mix. Once it's together, you let it rest for 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, you give it a quick knead. It takes a minute, two minutes. That's all you need. And then let's take a look down actually real quick. Even better, right? So this is a dough that's been kneaded and it's in the oil bowl. So you can see it's not sticking to my hands. It's not sticking to the bowl. You can come back up now, sir. All right. Um, and then here's something cool. I put a little dough to the side. Excuse me for the extreme close up. Thanks, Bev. Thanks, Lenny. Appreciate it. Uh, so take a look at the stretch, right? I put this little one to the side so you guys can see that the gluten that's been developing, and, and that's what we're looking for. Um, you know, can this gluten development that we're seeing here, right? If you're stretching your dough like this, right? Compared to this one, right? Look, uh, try to get it for you. You see how it starts to break? Because this doesn't have any gluten yet. We just mixed that dough. I just kneaded it and I put it to the side. This is one that's, look at that, I'm yanking on it. It's not tearing because those gluten strands are super strong. That's what you want in pizza dough. Like how do you get that perfect bite of pizza? That's what you want. Does that mean you need to work it with your hands for an hour? No, absolutely not. When you leave it in the refrigerator, the yeast is basically doing that for you. Um, so cool, props are working, huh? You know, props to pops. And uh, let me wash my hands real quick. Let's see where we're at on the old uh, one, two, three. Um, I wanted to show you guys, um, I wanted to show you a little ricotta cheese um, as well. Um, Jose, why don't you show everybody what Detroit style pizza, the old DSP looks like. I'm from Miami, coming out to LA, serving pizza from Detroit, what if we did a Detroit style pizza with a little mommy flair? Hey y'all, look here man. What it look like, you know, you wanna cook right, cook right, cook right, wanna cook right. Better look right when they telling me to look left, hook right, look right, book like right, cook. What it look like, what you know, you wanna cook right, cook right, cook. This one tastes like uh, linguine and clams. Better look right when they telling me to look hey, left. Oh my God, it's so fucking hot. Better look right when they tell uh, We call it our K-Town slice. Now, 4 a.m., the alarm clock is gunshots. All I see is vows walking to the bus stop. This is not the project. This was suburbia. What are you trying to get crazy with? Oh, it's murder, yeah. What the fuck we thought it was? We the gentrified few on the other side of Northwest full of live crew. 
No Chicago, no New York, no Italy, Detroit. Hey, the, the big city. Well, all right. Uh, that gives you the, a little bit of taste of it. Um, that was something that was shot out in L.A. Uh, shout, shouts to Premier Pat, shouts to Roy Choi. Uh, we did a little pizza pop-up um, at the Line Hotel in K-Town. Um, that was a quick look. Thanks, Jose, for, for pulling the trigger on that one. Mm. I feel like maybe you, too, need a Negroni. Um, regardless, we're moving a right along. Um, let's take a look down real quick. Um, just so you see what we're, what we're doing here now. Um, we've got ourselves a beautiful pan to cook pizza in. Um, I pick up these pans from, uh, you can come back up. I pick up these pans, uh, my go-to has been Lloyd pans. Um, they make these stellar um, pans for, for baking pizzas. Um, it has this uh, proprietary coating on it. Um, I've tried all the different ones. I've done black steel pans, I've done blue steel pans, I've done cold rolled steel. And the Lloyd pan is my go-to pan um, on, on pan pizza. They make them round if you wanna do like bar pizza. Um, you know, if you wanna do a Detroit style pizza, they have the high lip pan or the Sicilian. Um, the Sicilian has like a lower profile and it's, uh, it's a square. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to pan up your pie because that's the next step. Uh, if you have a sheet pan, right, like a half sheet pan and you wanna try, to, try your hand at it, you can give it a go. Um, when I was first trying to make pan pizzas, I used, um, I used half sheet pans and I'm not gonna lie to you, it's really, really difficult. The dough sticks um, really, really badly those sheet pans just aren't made for baking directly on them. Um, they're just like a little too porous. If you get a brand new stainless half sheet pan and you want to try it, go for it. Oil it really well. But let's look down. Um, so that's our pan, right? This is where we're going to make our pan pizza. I've got the dough. And the first step is you want to oil your pan. I like a very good, generous amount. Um, and then, you know, pro tip here using your own tools is you want to rub this oil in a bit and spread it all around, get it up even in the corners and on the sides. Uh, those are the kind of hallmarks of sticking. And then we're going to take that dough that you saw. So something that's cool here with pan pizza is you don't necessarily have to shape, right? You can just go from this um from this bulk ferment right you could see um on this dough that it is ready it has a nice coating of oil i'm gonna turn it over and you could see it's gonna start stretching pretty much right away um and 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 that's what you need uh what you do here is you use your fingertips right to start pressing the dough in and you're gonna see they'll start to leave like those dimples the same exact process as a focaccia, same, same, same. And so that's the idea. So now that it's panned up, you want to let it, um, you want to let it rest there. And then so just for like further reference, we have this bad boy, right? This is going to be our Sicilian. Um, I've got a little oil on my fingers and you'll see this one stretches a whole lot better and you want to stretch it all the way to to the corners right like it is a square pie um, so you know take the time you set your dough and in these sort of like 10 minute uh, intervals you can come back up um, in these sort of like 10 minute intervals right you put your dough in you stretch it out give it 10 minutes, give it 20 minutes even, and then come back and then start stretching it a little more. I'm just trying to get this one real nice and I'm gonna pop it in the oven and we're gonna bake it off. So something cool on the, um, 
something real cool on the uh, on the square pies on these pan pizzas is you can par bake, right? Like you can pre bake this crust. I'm gonna give it a little, uh, just a little olive oil over the top. You can also do sauce at this point. Um, I've kind of gotten in the habit of of rocking just an oil crust. My oven is cranking. It's uh, as high as it goes. And I positioned uh, a baking steel, right? We've kind of gone and go over this before. If you have a stone grate, it's all the way on the bottom of the oven. Um, or you can position the lowest shelf on the lowest setting. Because uh, you want all that bottom heat. So in we go. I like to set a timer because, uh, you know, I'm going to be drinking Negronis, talking to you guys. I don't want to miss it. Um, the pie's gone in just on the pre-bake situation. Um, and so while that sucker is going, uh, I wanted to just give you a quick uh, one, two, three on some ricotta cheese. Um, just move that out of the way. Uh, you know, ricotta, ricotta cheese, it's, uh, it's really not scary, right? Um, you just grab this, make sure we're ready to rock and roll so we can look down. And, um, and so on this like white pie, right? Uh, there's no red sauce. It's just like some pureed, I like the puree roast, roasted garlic. I like ricotta cheese and uh, a little bit of the old mutz, right? A little mozzarella. You can use any cheese that, you know, tickles your, your fancy if you've got provolone or if you want to do like, um, like uh, cacio cavallo. These all work really, really well. Hmm. On pizza. Um, so let me show you a cool and easy uh, recipe we're just firing away recipes at you guys today. Um, this is gonna be ricotta cheese. So just take a peek at this. It's nothing much to see, but I've got a pan on the, on the flame, right? Take a look down at Cheese Town. So, um, you know, just, just flame. And maybe that'll do. Boom, like that. So I've already measured out, uh, this recipe is in the description again, guys. I've measured out three cups of milk. You've got one and a half cups of buttermilk and you've got one cup of heavy cream. This is the easiest, easiest ricotta cheese recipe you'll ever find. I've tested most of them and this is the one, it gives you the best yield. You can come back up on one. It gives you the best yield. Um, it's super delicious. And, and like, how easy is that, right? Um, you put three different milks into a pot. Um, my, little, my little tip to you is that you use the, uh, the black pot that it's not going to stick, you know, like... What happens with, with when you're cooking milks, right? Buttermilk, um, whole milk, heavy cream, whichever one you're cooking, it tends to want to stick to like a metal or scorch, and you don't want that. You know, there's a lot of natural sugars in milk. Um, and so you just kind of give it a couple of stirs while it's heating up, and then that's all you gotta do. You bring up the milk to like 190 Fahrenheit just before boil. If you want to boil it because it's easier, just keep an eye on it. And then you cut off the flame and you sit for 20 minutes and you've got yourself ricotta cheese. How easy is that? Guys, we're make, we made Negronis. I'm on my second Negroni. We got a square pie, a Sicilian square pizza in the oven. We're gonna dress it with a little fresh homemade ricotta cheese. Where are we at? Tell me what's going on. How do we think? What's what's the uh, what's the mo on the show today? Are, are y'all with me? 
Uh, Jose's lonely in Astoria. Can we get a shout out to Queens real quick? Hmm. Hmm. I can't stop drinking these Negronis. They're just so delicious. Um, so back to the old, I'm gonna move this to the side and when it starts to come up, I'm gonna show you guys. Um, Uh-oh, hold on real quick. All right, there we go. That could have been a bad thing. I've got full flame on my ricotta cheese mixture. Um, we're gonna let that start to come up to, to temp. We've got five minutes until this pie starts to come out and we can take a look at that. And it's all gonna come together right in front of your eyes. Tell me, what do you guys think of Pizza Chronicles part two? Are you with me most importantly? Are there any questions on pizza, on dough, on pan pizza? Does everybody know where to get a nice pan so you can make some pan pies for your own? Anybody uh, want to take a sip of my Negroni? All right, Jose, let's take a look at DSP this time, my man. Square pizza? What's wrong with this crazy snake? And you cover it with a little oil and you put it in the pan, the dough, and then you cover it and you let it proof. Pizza! Pizza! Cook it first. So it cooks all the way through, and then we'll cook it again. And then, like I say, you put some sauce on it, and you, and you part bake it, so it gets cooked twice. Make it nice and crunchy. Great pizza don't need a lot of cheese. It's the sauce that flavors the pie. I always felt that way. People want extra cheese, they'll tell you. Pizza is the... There's a nice pizza, very nice. Any pizza I make, I always let it sit. Very nice. I don't like when I see a lot of pizza guys go like this when a pie comes out of the oven. No need for that. Just let it settle, then you cut it. Pizza! Mm, very nice. That's how a slice would be served. Works out fine. A slice to go would be go like that. Like that. Straight ahead. Hey. Cool square pizza. Shout out to Square Pie City. You know, we're, we're doing the, the darn thing in Miami. Making that uh, Detroit style pizza. Wanted to give you a little taste of uh, of the goodness, guys. What is going on, uh, Bev, uh, Brian? What's going on, guys? Where Where do you guys think we're at? Are we gonna pull together this fantastic Sicilian white pie in time? Hmm. Huh? I know Jose is anxious to see this bad boy. Um, I'm gonna pull this thing out in just a second so we can take a look at it. Um, again, we mixed our dough from scratch by hand. We let it rest. We needed the pizza dough, right? So you mix, then you knead. Then you get your bulk fermentation on. I made one earlier this morning, pulled it out. Michelle knows what's up. Um, and then we fired off our first Sicilian square, super hot oven, really low right so that the bottom crust starts to get nice and crunchy you've got a nice little like pillowy uh, middle and then you add your toppings you can basically add any topping that you want the pizza obviously uh, i'm gonna rock out this white pie with ricotta cheese i made a quick little sauce with roasted garlic the way or the leftover from my ricotta cheese uh hold on real quick we've got something happening so um, let's take a look down, uh, give me two secs here, I'm gonna move this, yeah, there you go. Um, okay, so take a look here, we're, we're about to come up to a boil, and then, can you guys see that? Jose, can you see this happening, that it's starting to curdle? The acid from the buttermilk is cutting the, uh, is cutting the milk and it's forming these teeny little curds. It hasn't even come to a boil yet. Um, I like to do this. It's real, real hot. I'm gonna say this is about 170 to 180 degrees. And then as we let this sit, it's not gonna scorch because we're moving the bottom. But look at all these gorgeous curds. We're making ricotta cheese live. Jeremiah Bullfrog cuts it up. Look at this beauty. 
Pie is going to be coming out in 50 seconds. Let's go back up. I'm going to cut the heat on this and we're going to let it sit. Move that thing to the side because we're ready to make a little bit of square pizza, huh? Pizza Chronicles Part 2, sipping Negronis. We're live in the hive at five. Bev, Henry, what's good? Mm. These Negronis are delicious. Um, all right, so I'm going to pull this sucker out. Hang tight, two sacks. Safety first, everybody. I like to use these little clippers. All right, take a look down. There it is, nice, hot, crispy in the pan. Oven is still on, so what we want to do is start to dress our pie, right? You've got the par bake in, we want to make a gorgeous pizza. So I like to hit it with a little bit of the old mozzarella. I shredded up some, this is full fat cheese. It's, uh, it's low moisture, right? You want like an aged mozzarella, you do not want like a fresh mozzarella here. Uh, it just has too much water content. Um, like these, uh, these style pizzas work really well with this kind of cheese. And so like an even coating across. And then, uh, you know, I went ahead and made a little of the old ricotta cheese. Let's take, let's take a look up real quick. That spoon went flying never fear there's always another spoon here so here this is this gorgeous ricotta cheese right and uh it's it's just got that amazing sort of tingle to it i'm spreading it all over the pie because we want a nice coating of that you know if you wanted to make like a i don't know like a big ziti uh you know make your own ricotta cheese you can't beat it. Um, in fact, let me just make sure. Mmm. Mmm. Yes, I can confirm that it is delicious. And so an even coating of this ricotta cheese all across our pie. And then now it's just about seasoning, right? I like to hit it with a little bit of crushed red chili flake. Nothing too crazy. But just to sort of break up the richness there. I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of this uh, really good oil right across the top. And then here's the sauce that I made for my pie, right? This is kind of what brings it together is um, it's a little bit of roasted garlic and then it's, it's, it's a bechamel, but it's made with the roux, right? Fancy word for a flour butter thickener. Um, and it's just, this is just a, a little bit of a lighter bechamel um, that's been thickened. So it's gonna really work well on our, our white pie. And so in the oven we go with this bad boy as well. seven minutes and just like that we're gonna have ourselves a white Sicilian pizza on the uh, on the ricotta I just want to show you guys what we're looking at here whoa Jose did you hear that that was kind of crazy not gonna lie so uh, look at the look at the curds on this cheese. I'm gonna grab the uh, the super fine strainer so you can see what we're looking at here. So here we go. We're just pulling up some of these cheese curds. 
right? Ricotta in Italian just means recooked. You know, traditionally when you made um, when you made mozzarella, come back up, Senor. When you made um, when you made mozzarella, you had all this whey left over, right? When you make fresh mozzarella. Uh, and so what do you do with whey? W-H-E-Y -E um, is that you recook it and you introduce an acid uh, and, and that gives you uh, ricotta cheese. Um, and so all you need to do now is strain it. I've got this really cool tammy that works um, really, really well. And I start to scoop out the curds and I put it into my, my little draining basket um, you know, if you have cheesecloth, right, that's literally what it's for. Uh, cheesecloth is for cheese. Um, and so just take a look real quick, uh, down here in Cheesetown. Um, how cool is this? I'm going to start to strain off a bunch of my, uh, ricotta cheese. Just grab this so I don't make a mess. So in the strainer basket it goes... So the recipe for the ricotta cheese is also in the description because I love y'all. Y'all always hang out with me every Wednesday. Me and Jose, we're here making TV for, for everybody live. Things are weird. Most people are stuck at home. If you're going outside, you're wearing a mask, aren't you? Because you care about other people, don't you? So I'm just tapping out as much uh, much of the liquid as I can. And we're just gonna let this drain. And so you can control your own uh, texture here. If you want a really, really wet ricotta cheese, you don't let it hang or strain for long. If you want a drier ricotta cheese, you let it hang and drain longer. And you can even press it uh, you know, the Italians do like a ricotta salata. Um, you can come back up while I'm rambling. So you could do like a ricotta salata, which is uh, when you take your ricotta cheese and you press it and then you salt it. Um, salted ricotta cheese. Um, so take a look at this, right? You've seen the texture on the cheese that I made uh, just a couple hours ago. Um, it does have a, it's got a bit more firmness to it because we let some of the whey drain out and we don't want the whey to go to waste. So we recooked it with some pureed garlic, thickened it up with flour and some butter, a roux, and we made ourselves a beautiful white sauce for our white pizza. And here is the cheese that I literally just made in front of your eyes. I mean, this sucker is still steaming. I mean, how cool is that, guys? Uh, on the live stream, not only are we making Negronis, you've got the secret dough recipe. You can make your own pan pizzas at home. Now you've got ricotta cheese. There's nothing better. Just take a spoonful of this. It's a little hot. Mmm. Mmm. Full fatty. It's coating my tongue. It's uh, got that little bit of tang to it from the buttermilk. It's amazing. Uh, I'm gonna let this drain a little more. We're pulling this pie out, and that's about a wrap on the old uh, one, two, three. Jeremiah Bullfrog cuts it up. Um, we're gonna rock it out next week, guys. Don't you worry. I'm gonna I'm gonna study in the lab and figure out how do we wrap up season two. Jeremiah Bullfrog cuts it up. But real quick, let me pull this thing out so we can see what we got. Safety first. All right. We got our pie straight out of the oven. I'm going to put down this little, take a look down. We want to burn up our board, so we put a rack down. This thing's looking pretty good. So we're gonna pull it out, let it sit for just a sec. So there we have our square pie, right? You can come back up, sir. There's our uh, there's our square pie. 
gonna let it sit for for just a couple of seconds i'm gonna cut it into some squares guys thank you for hanging out i really really appreciate it anything that we didn't cover are there any questions let me know now is the time we're bringing it to a close jose's dodging storms out in uh in astoria i'm here in miami making sure the tropical storms don't get to us finishing up our white pie we're gonna grate just a little bit microplane some parmesan cheese Rianne's asking for uh, for some Sergio's La Careta. We can get into it. Um, Eve C, appreciate it. Uh, Neza, hey, thanks for hanging out. Guys, I love y'all. Uh, here we go with a little finishing touch on our pizza. I'm going to hit it with a little bit of garlic oil as well. Because, you know, we want to take the uh, the flavor to the next level. So we did it today, huh? We went for it. We got square pizza, right? We did Negronis. You guys see how to make, um, you guys saw how to make ricotta cheese in your own kitchens. That's the end of the show, everybody. Let's take a little slicey slice. It's nice and crisp. Hear the crunch. And a little bit of square pie for everybody. Let's take a look real quick at the bottom. You know it's crispy. And that's it. Boom. Jeremiah Bullfrog cuts it up, back up on one. Guys, I appreciate y'all hanging out. Check out the recipes in the description. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. Leave me some amazing comments. Thank you so much. I'll see you next Wednesday. Bye. Hello. You know, when you fix an Italian food, Everything has got to be just so perfect, especially when you're making a pizza. Pizza! 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 Everybody loves pizza! 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 Everybody loves pizza. Only the finest and purest ingredients go into the original pizza! 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 Presto! A luscious, hot, crispy pizza! 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 Give me another pizza! Pizza, pizza, pizza. What do you have? Cheese, sausage, or pepperoni? Take it away! If you like pizza made the real Italian way with bubbly cheese, tangy seasonings, pure ingredients, you'll say our pizza is the mosta. Try some now. Pizza, pizza, pizza.